So I'm here um, at the European Society for Cell and Gene Therapy talking to Raja Hajar, who is um, a, one of the world leaders in cardiovascular gene therapy, who's presented some really exciting work on um, gene therapies for heart failure. Roger, do you want to tell us a little bit about why you're excited about this work? Uh, yes. Uh, so heart failure is an epidemic both in the US and the uh, European Union. Uh, with the aging population, it's increasing, uh, and there's clearly an unmet need in terms of therapies uh, for congestive heart failure. Uh, some of the targets that have been discovered in congestive heart failure uh, are difficult to target uh, pharmacologically, and for that reason, um, gene therapy has been used to, at least in experimental models, to rescue uh, heart failure phenotype, and that has led to a um, number of us to consider translating those experimental findings into clinical trials. And one of these targets was the SR calcium ATPase pump, uh, circa 2A, and it has been difficult to target pharmacologically. And for that reason, we chose a gene therapy approach and over the last 10 years, there's been a program to basically validate the target, uh, develop gene therapy methods to deliver uh, the vectors into the heart, and, and finally get into phase one trials. Um, and the phase one trials, which were started in 2007, were found to be safe uh, and even showed some biological activity. And now the phase two trial, which was a double blind, a uh, placebo-controlled trial uh, showed that the high dose of the uh, gene, ther gene therapy vectors delivering circuit 2 a uh, actually showed some real cl uh, clinical benefits in this very uh, sick population. So we're quite excited that, uh, one, uh, the AAV-based gene therapy trial uh, delivering circuit 2 a was safe. Uh, second, uh, in a phase two, uh, in the phase two trial, uh, we had some clear clinical benefits along with biological activity that was going in the positive direction. Uh, and again, that's uh, quite uh, uh, significant in the sick population. Uh, and we're obviously ready now for a phase three or phase two B, if you like, uh, trial with hundreds of patients as opposed to the uh, 40 or 50 patients we did so far. So you chose an AAV vector. Do you want to just reflect on why that's the, the, the optimum choice for the therapy you're undertaking? Sure. So um, our target is intracellular. Uh, it's decreased in heart failure. Uh, and we needed a replacement therapy that's long-term. Uh, and for that reason, AV vector, with its long-term expression and the safety profile, uh, was ideal. In addition, AV vectors are small, so you can deliver them uh, by intracoronary infusion, and because of their small size, they're able to infect the myocardium uh, and get into the myocardium uh, and uh, give this long-term uh, expression. A significant proportion of the human population have neutralizing antibodies naturally occurring. What's the significance of those for uh, your kind of approach? Yeah, so um, that was really uh, one of the issues that we found uh, while doing the trial, was that uh, half the population, uh, the heart failure population that we uh, were targeting, had neutralizing antibodies against AV serotype 1, the serotype we're using. and those patients had to be excluded. So testing for neutralizing antibody is critical, uh, and unfortunately the patients who have neutralizing antibodies cannot be included in the trial. And this is uh, due to the fact that the low doses of uh, vector we use, uh, any type of neutralizing titers would actually uh, completely wipe out the vector that we're introducing. So one of the areas that's been covered quite a lot in the conferences have been around immune responses to both the vector and the transgene. And um, T-cell responses, have they been an issue for your therapy so far? Yeah, so the T-cell response uh, is an important uh, component of uh, the immune response to uh, AV uh, gene delivery. Uh, 
because we are using lower doses in general, so 10 to the 13 viral genomes and lower, uh, in our uh, phase one and phase two trials, we have not seen any uh, T cell responses uh, as measured by LE spot assays. Um, as we move into the future of gene therapeutics entering um, regular clinical practice, what do you think the potential um, cost benefit could be for using gene therapeutics compared to the relatively expensive complex interventions for this population? Yeah. So um, the population we targeted uh, for our trial uh, were ones who had few options. So basically, it was either a cardiac transplant uh, or a ventricular assist device. And these types of uh, therapies are complex, associated with high morbidity, uh, and also very expensive. Uh, in the US, uh, any of these interventions would cost more than $150,000. Uh, the benefit of using a gene therapy approach is that it's relatively simple and it's one-time delivery. Uh, and if we do see significant improvement uh, in, uh, in the bigger trials, I think the cost-benefit ratio will clearly uh, uh, be borne out by this type of treatment. Okay. Um, gene therapy for heart disease is obviously a growing area, and you have a special issue coming out in the Nature Specialist Journal, Gene Therapy. Tell us a bit about what you've collected there. Yeah, so uh, as you mentioned, the uh, gene therapy for cardiovascular diseases has, uh, uh, the field has been quite explosive over the last few years, mainly in the experimental area. Uh, with the safety record and the positive results of the uh, gene therapy trial in, in, heart, in patients with heart failure uh, with AV1 circuit 2A, uh, a number of groups now are really uh, eager to test their own specific targets uh, for replacement therapy or knockdown therapy in uh, this kind of patient population. And uh, for that reason, uh, this was, this is uh, uh, the, the issue for uh, cardiovascular gene therapy is uh, quite timely. Uh, the topics that are going to be discussed are the one that more uh, that more that are most prevalent uh, in uh, gene therapy for cardiovascular disease, and they, they include uh, the different targets uh, that investigators are considering uh, uh, for cardiovascular diseases, the type of vectors uh, that are being used. Uh, transcriptional control, uh, how uh, these uh, uh, vectors and their expression can be controlled, the different types of capsids that can be used, um, and directed evolution to make novel AV mutants and chimera, chimera uh, uh, are going to be discussed, in addition to uh, setting up the clinical trials and uh, regulatory issues uh, with AV gene therapy. And that issue comes out in spring 2012. That's right. Exactly. Okay, we look forward to that and thank you for.